Hello, today you are going to see what happens when we mix the highly reactive, very toxic liquid bromine with the most reactive metal called cesium. They are located on opposite ends of the periodic table, which means we should expect quite a violent reaction. I have shown you a similar reaction already in my hand was a snack video, where I put some liquid neck onto some iodine crystals and mix them with a spatula. That produced quite a terrifying bang and what we are trying to do in this video is a lot more extreme. However, the same approach won't work for this video because previous experiments already showed that cesium very easily catches fire and air and reacts with iodine crystals on contact. That is why we used our trusted apparatus once again so we were able to mix the two reagents from a distance. To see how well the setup works in comparison, we also reacted neck with iodine. However, this time melting the iodine first to ensure it reacts on contact. Melting the iodine looks extremely beautiful. This worked really well, however it didn't make nearly as loud of a bang. This is probably because iodine has a much higher density than neck, making it hard for the two to mix fast enough. Since this worked so well, we immediately try this again with 3 ml of cesium instead of neck. If you want to know how the cesium was made and everything else about that element, you should go to the channel Advanced Tinkering and check it out there. I highly recommend it. The reaction was quite similar to the previous one with the neck. The purple vapors released afterwards looked very pretty though. Having done these tests, we felt quite comfortable to move on to the bromine. Compared to iodine, bromine is really incredibly dangerous and toxic. This is why we decided to test it with only one milliliter of cesium metal first. The first problem was that we wanted to show the reaction in a little polystyrene plastic cup but the bromine decided to eat right through it, which was a bit of a catastrophe. So we had to switch back to our trusted steel cups that also got eaten slowly by the bromine. Uh, los. The reaction with one milliliter of cesium was relatively tame so we went for a scale up with 3 milliliters of cesium once again. Yes. This was quite a bit more satisfying, however still not quite the bang we were expecting. Because the density of bromine is higher than the density of cesium, we thought it might be interesting to pour the bromine into the metal instead of the other way around. Before using up the remaining cesium, we tested it first with some neck. This time we were actually able to use the transparent polystyrene cups. To our surprise, it worked well and produced a nice bang. So, for the finale today, we used the last of our cesium, which was roughly 6 milliliters, so almost twice of what we used before. We also poured the bromine into the liquid metal once again, and here you can see a professional chemist filling in the bromine. Da war noch cesium. Start! The resulting explosion was not as loud, but it looked really beautiful with hundreds of burning cesium droplets flying through the air. 
If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to Advanced Tinkering and my channel.